Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video, we are covering example 4 from section 3-1 in the Savas Realize Algebra 2 textbook. So this example is looking at um, sketching a graph from a verbal description. Um, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's, it's certainly a way to think about things, and so that's why we're, we're trying to talk about it. So the first thing that I do when I graph is I try to identify the zeros. So remember, the zeros of a function occur when the positive and negative expressions change. So when the function goes from being positive to being negative. So these two are going to tell me about where my zeros are. All right. So this one says it's positive from the interval from negative infinity to negative 4. So at negative 4, it's changing direction. It's negative on the interval, so it'll, it'll be up here somewhere. Okay. It'll be negative on the interval negative 4 to negative 1. Okay, so the graph will be down here somewhere. It's positive again from negative 1 to 4. So it'll be up here somewhere. And it's negative again from 4 to negative infinity. So it's going to go down like that somehow. Alright, so there's the beginning part of our graph. So then what we do is now we're going to look at increasing and decreasing. These things are going to tell us about our turning points. So where the graph changes directions. Alright. So it says f of x is decreasing on the intervals from negative infinity, which I kind of have that marked, to negative 2.67. So negative 2.67 is like here. All right, so this graph is going down to like there, okay? So this is at negative 2.67. So then it starts increasing from negative 2.67 to positive 2. So it's going up from here to here, okay? Now, it's important to note it has to go through the zero, right, where it crosses. So it's probably something like that. Now, I don't know how high up or how, how far below these things go, right? Because I don't have a function to evaluate, and it doesn't tell me my y values. So this could be really close to the axis. It could be far away from the axis. We just don't know. So it's okay to have a varying height here, all right? And then it says that it's decreasing from 2 to, to positive infinity. So it's going downhill from there to there. So that gives you the, the basic shape. And there's our little turning points. We know that we have a turning point at 2. Alright, so it's not, it's not too bad. Let's try another one, okay? Sorry, seeing how far of an example I have. <laughs> so we start with the positive or negative intervals because those tell us our zeros, right? Alright, so it's positive on the interval from negative 2 to negative 1. So here we know it's, it's up here somewhere. It's also positive on the interval from 1 to 2. So we know that 1 and 2 have to be zeros as well. So then this says that it's negative from negative infinity to negative 2. So we know it's going to go down like that. We know it's negative from negative 1 to 1. So this one's going to have to do some kind of loop-to-loop -loop down like this. And we know that it's negative from 2 to infinity. So, so those zeros and the, the positive and negative intervals, they give us most of the shape of the graph. 
all that we need to do is figure out the turning points from the increasing and decreasing part. Okay, so these are your turning points. So we know that the graph is increasing from negative infinity to negative 1.5. So here is our first turning point. Very often, the turning point is halfway between the zeros. Not every single time, but it's usually a good, um, a good assumption to make. Now this is also increasing from 0, which is here, to 1.5, which is here. So here is where uh, the graph is going up. So I know I have at least this. Remember, it has to go through one, so I had to fix it right there. Alrighty, and then it's decreasing from negative 1.5 to 0, which isn't a surprise based on the rest of the graph, right? And it's decreasing from 1.5 to infinity, and remember it has to go through 2 because that's where our 0 is. So we have kind of a shape like that. So there you have it. That is how we get the general shape of our graph when we are given a description of the intervals. Until next time.